Hello, hope everybody had a great week. Weekend, remember that Memorial Day is coming. Take a few days in remembrance of all those who gave up their lives for this country. Those who served World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, Afghanistan. God bless those who are coming home, riding on an airplane, driven by some poor bird colonel. Who's bringing all 300 of you home safe and sound? This one captain. He's driving, thinking of those he loves and those he cares about. Turning to the Bible, I'd like you to turn to Psalm 91. We'll talk about that psalm. It's an important psalm. Psalm 91-7 through 9. Now read that whole psalm. Understand it. Because I'll be explaining a little what's behind the meaning of that psalm. And it starts off, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand. But it sh shall not approach you. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling place. Do we ever stop to consider what God is saying? To us in verse 7 as you read do we have the courage to trust God's word enough to believe he means this literally it is possible for this to be true and for us to miss our out on these promises questions is it possible Jesus answered the last question in Luke if you turn to chapter Luke 4-27 here in Luke 4 27 there are many leapers in Israel in this time of Elijah the prophet, and none was cleansed. Only Naaman the Syrian was healed when he obeyed in faith. Not everyone will receive the benefits of this promise in Psalm 91. Only those who believe God and hold fast to his promise will profit. Nothing less it is available, and to the measure that we trust him, we will in the same measure reap the benefits of that trust. What an awesome statement. God wants us to know that even though we're be thousand falling by our side and ten thousand on our right hand. It does not negate the promise that destruction will approach the one who chooses to believe and trust his word. The Amplified Bible says it's not so approach you for any person. In fact, that he means exactly what he says. It's no accident that this little statement is tucked away right here in the middle of the psalm. Have you noticed how easy it is to become fearful when disaster strikes all around you? If a storm comes upon your house, a kid will go all, uh, any kid will all, all of a sudden start shaking. Only to be comforted by a friend or a friend. It's no accident that this little statement is tucked away right here in the middle of the psalm. Have you noticed how easy it is to become fearful when disaster strikes again around? We begin to feel like Peter must have felt as he walked on the water to Jesus. It is easy to see how he started thinking in the ways when he saw all that turbulence of the storm raging around him in a little boat, thinking of Jesus, hoping to God that God gets him out of such a disaster. The waves were coming aboard, and all of a sudden the boat started to sink, and there he stood. God knew that there would be times when we would hear so many negative reports, see so many needs, and encounter so much danger. Around us we would feel overwhelmed that it's why he warned us ahead of time that thousands would be falling all around us. He did not want us to be caught off guard. But at this point, we have two choice to make. The ball is then in the court. We can either choose to run to his shelter in faith and the storm will not approach us, or we can passively live our lives the way the world does not, realizing that there is something we can do about it. Psalm 91 is the prevented measure that God has given to his children against every evil known to mankind. No places else in the world are all of the protection promises, including help from angels, as well as promises ensuring our authority, accumulated in one covenant to offer such a total package for living in this world. It is both an offensive and defensive measure for warding off every evil because it has time to strike. This is not only a cure, but a plan for completed prevention. What a tremendous insight after our mind has been renewed by the word of God to realize contrary to the world's thinking that we do not have to be amongst the 10,000 who fall at our right hand. 
You only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Psalm 81 8, as you read. You will not see recompense payment being doled out at, at, at times. This is a judgment. Every sin will be exposed. Sooner or later, paid for. And even this dictator, any, any dictator, and the unrighteousness of the virtue is stopped. A tyrant faces his crimes against humanity. A wrong is rectified. The recompense of the wicked speaks of justice. War has been fought where there was only one righteous, had a righteous cause, and constantly good one over evil. The justice of God is that evil not triumph, will not triumph. If you recall the history of World War II and Hitler, that Hitlers do not win, that communicistic governments fall, the darkness does not extinguish the light. Verse 8 says that we only look on and see it's happening. The world only tells us that we will be protected by not experiencing the evil, even though we will see it and it denotes detachment in this evil. You, we, will not see it, not get inside of us. We are set apart and that we will not allow our enemy to hate to change us. Let's look for just a moment in the scripture and our faith in the mind. Do we sometimes fall short into unbelief? Faith in God, in His Son, Jesus Christ, in His Word, encountered in God's eyes is righteousness. But when we are in unbelief, to some degree, we are placing ourselves in the category of the wicked, sometimes, even as a Christian, often caused by temptations, questions, self-doubts, self-insecurities, self-in-beliefs, loss of hope, loss of a loved one, all kinds of questions that leads someone sometimes astray, only to be rescued or very closer toward turning toward God. That would be an example, is it not? To change this, let's leak for a moment again. The scripture of our faith in mind, do we sometimes fall short in unbelief? Ask yourselves that question. To receiving and all, I have been unbelieving believer when it comes to receiving all of God's word. Jesus says in Matthew, if you turn to Matthew in the Bible, 5-18, not that the smaller letter or stroke of his word will ever pass until it's all accomplished, even if his believer never utilizes the psalm in its full potential. The truth, that truth has never passed away or lost one of its power. Late one night, sooner after building our new home in the country, our family was faced with a severe weather this person away. That would be an example on Psalm 91 as you gaze upon it. The local radio station warned that a tornado, such a storm was coming, had been sighted just south of Country Club, the exact location of our property. We could see several other React Club vehicles parked on the road below our hill. As the members watched the funniest cloud, the funnel clouds that seemed to be headed straight for our house. I had never seen such a strange eerie color in the night sky or experienced such a deafening silence in the atmosphere. You could actually feel the hair on your body stand on end. Someone knew that danger was coming. Some of our son's friends were visiting, and to their surprise, Jack quickly ordered our family to get outside with our Bibles, even though we were all in our pajamas. About to be far ready to go to sleep. Some of our son's friends were visiting, even though we had we were in our pajamas and started circling the house, quoting Psalm 91 and taking authority over the storm. Jack had our children out speaking directly to those storm, just like Jesus did. The airy signs suddenly turned into a roar with torrents of rain coming down, and what seemed like buckets full. Finally, Jack had a peace, had a peace that the danger had passed, even though by sight sighted nothing had changed. We walked back in the house just in time to hear the on-location report call the radio announcer, hearing the emergency broadcast announcement over the air. No such exciting, he was almost shy. There is nothing short of miracle. The funnel cloud south of Brownwood County Club had suddenly lifted and vanished into the cloud. As all tornadoes do. When they're done. You should have been the, you should have seen those kids jumping and hollering. It was the first time my son's friend had observed the supernatural at work. However, their surprise was no greater than that of our daughter's college professor. The next day. He asked the students in his class that we were doing during the storm. Several said they were in the bathtub under a mattress. Some were in closets. The one in a storm cellar. 
You can imagine the astonishment when he got around to our daughter. Angela said, with a tornado headed our direction, my family was circling the house, quoting from Psalm 91. We will not be afraid of the destruction that lays waste. It will not approach us. Imagine how brave those people were standing there in front of that storm, reading the Bible. Many people think of the gospel as an insurance policy. Securing only their eternity and their comfort after disaster strikes. They are depriving themselves of so much. Perhaps we all need to ask ourselves the question, what kind of coverage do I have? Fire or life, God's word is more than merely an escape from hell. It is a handbook for living a victorious life in this world. Jesus lived in a realm in which he literally was not approached by evil. There is a difference between the destruction of the enemy and the persecution for the gospel's sake. As Paul writes in 2 Timothy 3-12, turn to 2 Timothy 3-12 when you can and read that area. Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Then there are times we will be mistreated because of our stands for the cause of Christ. Times we often think of, uh, think of some things other than God. It's only when we turn to God when we feel at a loss. The question is what? Do you let go of such an insecurity, such doubts? Such doubts that help you not reach your dream. Think of those examples. There are times when we will be mystery because of our stand for the cause of Christ. Psalm 91 is a very distinct concept dealing with natural disasters, accidents, sickness, and destruction. Jesus suffered persecution, but he did not face calamity, disaster, and mishap. Accidents never approach him. This distinction is easy to understand if you separate persecution from freak accidents and mishaps and storms. There is a place where calamity literally does not even approach you. This would be seemingly impossible to imagine, especially in a combat situation. Yet to look at this verse in its true context with its thousands following it is that we observe the strongest description of casualty and calamity named in the psalm. Of 91. If this is a verse in a description of national combat, I don't know what is. Yet tied to it, promise of protection beyond anything that could otherwise be envisioned. This portrayal of people falling directly connected to the promise that it will not even come near us to the opposite poles joined together. Is this possible? Ask yourself that question. What do you turn to most when you feel at a loss? Your family, your friends, friends and family can't be around you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's not until you pick up a phone. Oh, yes, there's a tornado. There's, there's a storm coming. It's a desert storm coming this way. It's about to cover my house. What should I do now? Hello? Oh, then they can't hear you no more. Got it. Who do you turn to most when you're scared out of your mind? Trust me, you're bound to do something, a sudden thought, a prayer. Lord God, Allah, please help me. Jerusalem, someone help me up there. Protect me, guardian. Someone. All of a sudden, the storm comes over your house and then vanishes. Miracles happen every day. Just imagine hospitals. All you have to do is pray real hard. Just as these people are praying, in front of this tornado that it doesn't hurt their house, doesn't destroy their house, and leave them with nothing, as such tornadoes would do sometimes, without any explanation. All or more. Disasters of natural and weather reports always come around. It's important to listen, to be alert, and to focus, because when they strike, sometimes you only have minutes. Take shelter, even in the bathroom. That is the strongest part of the house. A lot of people don't realize this here in America. When a tornado or a severe storm affects the house and it's pouring down your home, the bathroom and the basement is the strongest part of your house. Believe in yourselves because if you believe in yourselves, nothing in life, as Psalm 91 teaches, can ever go wrong. Remember, you can only fall so far down in life, feeling like a part of the sun, only to arise 
done yet in the wall. Run experience. Learn from your own mistakes. And live your life fully. God be with you wherever you are in the world after all peace. As most nation leaders agree, it's better than war. Take up a new hobby. Take up a new health, a new life. God be with you, especially those serving or who serve. Much better.